We're here today to talk about chasing uh, dog tooth tuna. Now you can uh, chase dog tooth tuna pretty well all around the world. Um, we've got pretty well the best dog tooth fishery right here on our doorstep in Australia. Um, you'll find Coral Sea is probably one of your best fisheries for them and one of your best places to find them. Dog tooth are also found in uh, northern western Australia as well. It's a pretty pretty healthy fishery there. Most of the time you're chasing uh, dog tooth uh, from charter boats where you'll stay out on a boat for seven days or so and you'll dive out of dories with ten other blokes or so. There is the odd guy who does chase them out of their trailer boats, um, diving in close around, can see them out and things like that. The biggest part uh, that you'll understand when you start chasing dog tooth is how addictive it is. There's no fish like it. Um, a five kilo one will rip, rip skin out of your hands and find faults in your gear pretty quickly too. The biggest thing that I find um, is teamwork. Once you start chasing dog tooth, it's definitely uh, every fish is a team fish. You can't just land them on your own. It's, it's quite hard. So most of the time, once uh, we're out chasing dog tooth, we usually jump in the water. We'll always have one person on burley, one person on the flasher. Um, we'll have at least one big gun in the water. A uh, big gun is something like this. Um, so this is the Rife Mac 5. So it's an aluminium barrel with teak wings and 316s and an 8mm shaft running a slip tip on it as well. Uh, biggest part of that is you're looking for a heavy shaft that's going to have really good penetration. A slip tip on it so it's less chance of losing the fish and plenty of power. So having that big gun in the water, that person usually has the big float set up. So again here we've got something like the Diver Dog Stopper. So this is a small dog stopper um, and a pretty solid float line. Uh, you want, want gear that's going to give minimal give and minimise the amount of pull that the fish can actually get going with. Um, so that's the reason you only really want one, gun in the, one big gun in the water, even if you swap it between the divers, you know, burliers and the flashers. Uh, but the biggest thing is focusing on everyone has their own, their own role. You're not going to be able to get many fish in without burley. Uh, you're not going to be able to hold many fish around and, and get an easier shot for the person with the big gun um, without a flasher. You'll also need someone focusing on keeping that burley coming. So typically we've always got someone in the water with uh, you know, your standard 1-2 gun. The biggest reasons for that is you don't really want to be shooting a you know, 1.3 cannon at 5 kilo jobbies. Um, that's still a prized fish so it's always good to have that, those a few spare guns in the water so you can get all that bycatch that does come through. Um, so always keep that in mind when you're out chasing dog tooth. As soon as you start seeing uh, the person with the big gun levelling out, so you'll see them obviously in the water, you'll see them arm cocked levelling out, at least chasing something. Um, typically, me, either as the burlier or the flasher, if I can, I'll, I'll go straight over to that person's float line. I'll start also, if it's a deep dive, feeding them float line to stop the amount of drag that's coming from the float and the float line. Um, and then from there, once they've pulled the trigger, you want to be straight on to pulling up that slack and stopping the amount of uh, slack that that dog tooth can get up. Um, yeah, you want to be putting the herd on them straight away, stopping them get, from getting through the reef and getting their head of steam up, which you know, everyone knows of the old doggy spew, spew their guts and run. As soon as the, the trigger is pulled, put the herd on them straight away, get them up and get them away from the sharks. Put a, put a shaft in them straight away, a second shaft. It's, to me, like it's, uh, it's personally about landing the fish and sitting on the back of the boat having a beer. It's not about uh, absolute glory of landing a dog tooth on your own. You'd always want to go for the stone shot. But what I usually do is I swim down. If I'm swimming down on the fish, I like, for me personally, I'm always trying to shoot that fish on that 45 degree angle from behind. So I want to be hitting back through that top right shoulder, for example, if I'm facing it from this angle, on that top right shoulder, straight through, and I want to be coming out, out the other left hand side. You actually have a lot more control of the fish and it's easier to turn them, um, which is the biggest thing. Whereas if you shoot them straight up and down, I find that they can just run straight. They can pretty much do what they want with you. If you hit them on that angle from the side, you've got less chance of um, bending your shaft as well as, yeah, you're pretty much just leading them straight back around. You're turning them with you. Um, and you know, if you can turn around and keep them just going, doing circles below you, that's, that's beautiful. Biggest thing as well with dog tooth is uh, the surroundings that you're typically in. Um, with dog tooth, yeah, as I said, you're usually out at the Coral Sea um, or yeah, North uh, Western Australia. Typically, you're going to have a fair few sharks around you in the water with obviously you're burling quite a bit. You've got flashes going, there's lots of noise. Um, 
And, you know, sharks really are starting to come accustomed to people pulling the trigger and what happens after. So they're pretty accustomed to a free feed. So the biggest thing, again, is teamwork, is, is diving down on each fish, you know, beating sharks off it with your gun, making, keeping them at distance from the fish if possible. Uh, you, obviously, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you or any of your mates can get, can get hurt. So it's always a good idea to keep your eye on each other. Um, it's pretty easy for yourself to, you know, to get lost just looking at that fish and you're burling or flashing or breathing up, focusing on that. But it is a big thing to stay aware of your surroundings and make sure that you're looking out for each other. Um, and the day you want to get back on that boat and finish the day off uh, having a good dive. In summary, when chasing dogtooth, make sure you have all the right gear set up to doing it. Make sure you all are aware of your jobs and you know, working together when you're in the water. End of the day, guys, just have fun with it. Thanks for tuning in to Adreno Tips, guys. Have a good day.